Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial on compositing and post-processing. My name is Radu and in this course I will show you how to composite all the render elements that you have obtained from V-Ray and how to control every aspect of your rendered image. Let's begin. So we pick up right after we have completed rendering in the past sessions in Rhino and V-Ray. Now if you are following along for tips and tricks of how to composite your renderings all the information and all the tips I will show you still apply regardless of what you used to render out your image or which render elements you have produced. If you have followed along in the Rhino series, you will see that we have completed rendering the Smith house. And at the end of the rendering sessions, I have shown you which render elements to render out. Now let's see what the final result was. I'm just going to open up my folder over here. And now I do have quite a lot of images. Some of these are part of the denoiser uh, render element, which gives you a lot more information than you might uh, expect. But I will show you what the actual result was. So the base image, which was rendered out, was this one. And this is just the base RGB image that was exported from V-Ray. As you can see, it does pick up quite a fair bit of noise. And the distinction between this one and the one that has been passed through the denoiser is quite drastic. And I'll show you them side by side. So on the left hand side, we have the denoised image. And clearly on the right hand side, we have the image as a standard with all the noise. And you can see a clear distinction between all the surfaces. This is a much cleverer way of dealing with lower rendering settings and then dealing with all the resulting noise through this kind of post-processing uh, baked into V-Ray rather than increase your rendering settings and hope for the best and just wait hours and hours on end. Okay, so now that we have all these images, the practice would be to actually composite them on top of themselves and control various aspects of the resulting image and enhance uh, things such as reflections or shadows or the general light without even going into the overall aspect of the image. We will see that process in the next video called post-processing. In this one, I will show you how to composite some of these render elements and what types of changes you can expect to do within them. So the first step would be to create a new Photoshop file. Okay, so from here, what I want to choose is the denoiser image, the diffuse, my extra textures channel, the material ID, the raw GI, the raw light, raw reflection, raw refraction, raw shadows, reflection filter, refraction filter, and the specular, and load them up into your file. Okay, now that they have all been imported, let's rearrange the order and start the compositing process. So my denoiser image will be the base for everything that I do. So this will be at the bottom and it will stay as normal with no changes to the blending modes or the opacity. Next, let's drag the diffuse image on top. 
set this on and I'm going to set this on overlay and as you can see the overall effect becomes too strong so we are going to reduce this to about 20-25% the next one is my extra textures channel now we set this to multiply and this you can increase or decrease the opacity depending on your tastes I will show you the effect with and without and you can see this adds a whole other degree of realism to the image simply because it adds the shadows in the places where light won't travel as much and at this point this is a bit too strong so I'm going to set this down to 50% next let's have a look at the raw GI so let's set this to screen and it might be a bit too bright especially at the bottom here on top of these rocks which have been blown out so let's apply some masks and exposure correction first let's apply an, an exposure correction onto these rocks and setting this all the way down to 1.7 ish and increase the gamma and I only want this applied onto my rocks so this is where the material ID comes in because this simply applies a random color to each individual material that you will apply within your scene in V-Ray so I can quickly choose the rocks using the magic wand tool and now coming back onto the exposure map I can delete them and now invert and I only want to apply this onto the raw GI and now I want to apply a new exposure correction affecting the remaining image so apply another exposure correction apply it onto the raw GI and what I want is to affect everything but the rocks okay so just to check this is the base image and now it, it becomes a bit more brighter and you can see the tips of the leaves and a bit of the tree trunks behind where the contrast is too great as well as a distinction across the grass meadow in the front and and so on okay moving on let's add the raw shadow and you see how this although it should have been just shadow so just a singular color we get a lot of colorful artifacts so the first thing I would do would be to invert it because I want the shadow to be black rather than white and now let's set this to a soft light blending mode set to 25% and if you have a look over the glazing you see that now this tree 
will cast a shadow across the glass which in reality shouldn't actually happen because the shadow will simply pass and fall upon the nearest opaque surface as you can see turning off the shadow layer we do not see that shadow across the glazing so what we need to do is simply mask out the glazed element into the shadow render element so again using material IDs we simply select everything that is shaded everything that was glazing And so you see the difference. Moving on to the raw light. And this will contain all the light inside the scene. So let's set this to overlay. And set it at about 30%. Now again, as we've seen with the shadow, it creates this shading effect across the glazing, as well as for some reason around the tips of the branches where they meet the sky. But we can simply resolve this with a mask. So if we select the glazing again, as well as as well as the sky okay so now we see we no longer have any shadows across the glazing and the effect along the top branches has been reduced giving us an increased contrast along the shaded parts of the image. But we can also apply some further adjustments to this render element and actually increase the overall effect on our image. So let's apply a brightness and contrast adjustment and let's reduce the brightness a bit. Let's play around with some levels. And maybe even apply a black and white filter onto the raw light because it does come with a bit of coloring. And also I think the rocks are a bit too bright because of this so let's quickly adjust this as well simply copy the masking from one of the previous ones and apply it onto the raw light yeah that's a bit more like it okay obviously you can play with the settings as you think your image requires and to suit your own particular tastes. Now let's move on to reflections. Let's take the raw reflection element. Let's drag it along. And now we want to set this to overlay and bring it right down to about 50%. Now because I have set a degree of reflection to almost all materials in my V-Ray scene. This now comes up and affects the general aspect of the image. Clearly the leaves won't ever be so shiny nor would the grass be affected so much. 
so really all I want is the reflection across the overly reflective surfaces such as the glass or the the water here the, in the foreground so let's simply mask that out and for that I have the reflection filter which I will bring just on top and from here I can simply select what I want using the magic wand tool or I could do the same within the material ID channel okay so now you can see the effect with and without and because we have masked this separately from the rest clearly you can go in and change the levels knowing only to apply them onto the reflection pass the next step is to add the specular render element and just I'm going to leave this just on top of the reflection filter and set this to screen giving it about 50 percent it's always helpful to simply turn them off and on until you see what the effect is and adjust it to your liking and you can see it affects the very slight reflections from the brick surface just giving them that little sheen across their clean surface okay and then let's have a look at the refractions turn this on and set it to lighten mode give it say 75 80 percent and simply just drag a copy of the denoiser above and we can establish what the differences are and where we need to work now clearly this being the raw image from V-Ray having all the various elements already composited we can say this is a virtually correct image in terms of lighting and reflections, refractions and so on but if we want to change various aspects within our image to suit our specific objectives we can then clearly adjust various parts as we have seen so far so perhaps there is a bit too much light in my image now and too little contrast in the colors so I'm just going to quickly go in what I expect to be the, the light as a source for this issue and let's just play around with some of the settings okay so I believe that should be enough let's check again and I'm quite happy with the changes that I've made it has made the reflections and the shadows appear a bit more obvious especially in the trees and across the foreground here as you can see 
and the contrast has a bit more range rather than being overly dark to overly bright as you can see in the base rendered image now this has been just about compositing the the various render elements and affecting the impact they each have within the various aspects that they cover rather than a general adjustment of the overall feeling and um, atmosphere of the entire image that will come in part two when we will have a look at post-processing using Lightroom. I hope you have enjoyed watching this video and have learned how to use the various render elements that you can obtain from V-Ray and how to affect them individually using Photoshop. I will catch you back in the next one.